<laughs> Pre-calc, this is 2.3, day two. We are going to find a better, faster way of dividing polynomials. Now, guys, I have to front load this with this idea. We've dealt with quadratics. By now, technically, you guys should be experts with quadratics. You know when you can factor them. You know when you can't. But you also know that you always can get an answer because that quadratic formula seems to always work, right? Dividing is the same type of thing. I can use long division. It's kind of like the quadratic formula. It's always going to work. And so... I'm trying, I found dog shampoo, not the same thing. <laughs> I like dog shampoo. And so... <laughs> Directions, apply through wet hair, lather and rinse out. For better results, follow with oxygen, moisturizer, conditioner. In case of contact with eyes, rinse thoroughly. It is not safe. <laughs> <laughs> and so what we're going to do... Is that... When I move to synthetic division, guys, synthetic division is a specialized way of, uh, of factoring or dividing, sorry. And so it doesn't always work. So when does it work? It works when you are dividing by a linear factor. Now, what does it mean? To be a linear factor. It's a line. Look over here at the example they give. You're dividing by x minus 3. x minus 3 is a line. It's very easy if I set that equal to 0 to solve it. So that's why we are only using linear factors. <coughs> Notice the same polynomial as yesterday, same setup, divide by this polynomial here. And so we have some directions. Now I'm going to modify these when we actually start the problems, but this is a very good outline of what needs to be done. I'm going to add something to step number one. They're pretty packed full of stuff. But step number one says, or what it says before that, it says to divide a polynomial by the factor x minus c. So again, it's leading us to believe that you can set x equal to a c value. It says, number one, it wants you to write the coefficients of the dividend in standard form. It has to be in standard form. What I would like to add to this, though, is you need to have placeholders. Your coefficients have the placeholders just like before when you're inside the division. It says, write the related 0 C of the divisor of x minus C. Basically, what makes this thing equal 0? What makes that divisor of x minus 3 equal 0? What's the value of x? 3. So that's why, <laughs> if you look here, they put a 3 on the outside. They got the coefficients going across the top. They got a 3 on the outside. Then it says, drop or bring down the first coefficient. The 6 gets dropped to the bottom. That's cool. Step number 2. Now that's the setup. Step number 2 says, multiply across. So 3 times 6, 18. Step number 3 says, add down. To negative 25 plus 18. Negative 7. Step number 4, rinse and repeat. So therefore, I'm just going to do it again. What's 3 times negative 7? It's negative 21. Negative 21 plus 18 is negative 3. Negative 3 times 3? Negative 9. Negative 9 plus 9? 0. That is your remainder. You just keep doing this until you run out of numbers to do it to. And you're done. So we're going to use synthetic division here. I want us to divide 
4x cubed plus 3x squared minus x plus 8. I want to divide that by x minus 3. So, do I need placeholders in that long polynomial? No. Okay. Now, I'm going to adjust this, guys, from what you guys have seen. I want you guys to, what I say is a backwards upside down L. I've been told it's really not backwards or upside down. But, a backwards upside down L thing. I'm going to place my coefficients in the top right. Oops, not x, but negative 1 and 8. I then have to go over to my divisor and say, hey, when does that equal 0? When the answer is? Zero. Three. Three. So that goes on the top left. <laughs> I am also going to drop four. And I'm going to add one more thing that's different from last time. Or the directions. I'm going to put a little small box here. An open box. That's because that's my last number. If you go back to the other slide... That last number represented the mm -hmm. remainder. So I'm going to box out the remainder. So that way I can definitely highlight what it is. Okay? And I'm going to keep everything in its column. And now I can do the problem. What's 3 times 4? 12. 12. And then I'm going to add going down 15. 3 times 15? 45. 45. Add down 44. And now, what's 3 times 44? 132. 132. Add? 140. 140. Now, notice that you had a remainder. Yesterday, when we did long division, if you had a remainder, we would have to write it as plus 140 over the divisor, which is x minus 3. But where's the quotient? Where's the answer? Hey, watch this. This is pretty cool. We said this is the remainder. This is a constant. This one is x, and this one represents x squared. If there was another term, it would be x to the third, then x to the fourth, fifth, sixth, seventh, all the way until you run out. So what this means is that I actually have 4x squared plus 15x plus 44 plus 140 over x minus 3. I just factored, or not say factored, I divided the polynomial there, that cubic polynomial, by x minus 3. I think this is a little bit faster or cleaner than the long division. Now remember, there are some slight differences here. I added, I did not subtract, and I only use coefficients. <coughs> Okay? I didn't have to worry about, oh, x squared and, and x cubes and all of those things. I want you guys to set up the next one on your own. So, when we set this up, do I need placeholders on this one? Yes. Where? We don't. 6, 11, negative 15, negative 12, 7. I'm going to put a bracket at the bottom of 7 because that's where the remainder should be. What's the number that goes out front? Three. It's not 3. It is set it equal to 0, guys. Subtract the 1 over, divide by 3. It's actually a negative 1 third. So it's still a linear factor, guys. Now, i got to take 6 and drop it down. What is one, negative one-third of 6? Uh, uh, Add it. Nine. 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 9? A th negative third of 9? Negative 3. 18. <laughs> That's negative 18. Negative, negative makes a positive. six. Negative six, two, 
Nine. So what is the resulting polynomial here? 6x cubed plus 9x squared plus 18x minus, minus 6 remainder. No, nine. Nine. I personally, guys... I feel that you guys would really benefit by placing the remainder constant x, x squared, x cubed underneath. So you know you are doing 6x cubed plus 9x squared minus 18x minus 6 plus <coughs> 9 over plus 1. Is that cool or what? Now... Guys, if there happens to be placeholders, it doesn't affect things. It just has to have, you're adding zero then. Now, what if I said that you guys could shorten up some of your evaluating functions? I would say go So, here's a cool thing, is that synthetic substitution is a faster way to evaluate higher degree polynomials. And all I'm using is synthetic division rules. It seems a little complicated when you read this at first. It says that if a polynomial f of x is divided by x minus c, which we just did in the last two problems, the remainder r is the value of the function at c. So let's highlight this because you guys are probably like, huh? Okay. Get this. Got an example there. I want you to take that function, 6x to the fourth power plus 11x cubed minus 15x squared minus 12x plus 7, and I want you to evaluate for f of 2. I want you to do it by substitution, which is the normal way you guys would evaluate functions, and then we're going to do synthetic substitution, a.k.a. synthetic division. So let's go the long way first. F of 2 says I take out all the x's and put in a 2. Right? This takes a while. You got to know what 2 to the 4th power is. So 6 times 16 plus 11 times 8 minus 15 times 4 minus 24 plus 7. So what's 6 times 16? 96 plus 88 minus 60. Minus 17? Yes. And if I put all that together, I get? Something like 107, eh? Yeah. That's for sure. So, ladies and gentlemen, would you guys agree with me when I said f of 2 is equal to 107? Yes. Okay, what if I said I could find that answer without having to take something to the fourth power? Now, guys, do synthetic division, a.k.a. make the bracket, fill in your numbers, 6, 11, negative 15, negative 12, 7. And, guys, the number that you are subbing in is the C value. It's the value we were finding before. Put in 2. Drop 6. 2 times 6. Add. It's 23. Multiply. Add. Multiply. Add. Multiply. Add. The remainder was 107. Because synthetic 
Substitution says that if I take the value of C and plug it in, the remainder is the value associated with that input. So guess what? Go back here. When I put in 3 into that first equation, what was the outcome? Right. This function evaluated for 3 is 140. This one evaluated for negative 1 third is 9. So whenever you put 9 in? If I put it, no, if I put in 3, I'll get 140. If I put in negative 1 third into this function, I get 9. Okay. Makes it go a lot faster. Next, we are going to use the same idea we did yesterday when we long divided our polynomials when we got a zero remainder meant that the thing you were dividing by was a factor. So if I am able to put a value in to synthetic division that has a zero remainder, it actually is telling us that the C value is a factor of that polynomial. And so what this is going to say is use the factor theorem to determine if the binomials are factors and then use those binom binomials to factor the actual function. We're only going to do the top one. I'll take the second one out. So do I need placeholders? No. Three, negative one, negative 22, and 24. Make a bracket, three. I need to test this twice. What we have here are two different choices. It says you've got to test them. Is x minus 2 a factor of this problem? Is x plus 5 a factor of this polynomial? The way you do this, do synthetic division. If you get 0, it's a factor. If you don't get 0, not a factor. So, which, if I wanted to use the x minus 2, what's the number that goes on the outside? 2, because it's what makes it 0. Multiply. 6, add. Multiply. Add. Multiply. Add. 0. <laughs> So, the question is, is x minus 2 a factor? Yes. 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 Put yes above it. Now we have to test it again. 3, negative 1, 22, negative 22, and 24, bracket, drop the 3, and this time I'm going to test negative 5. Negative five. Multiply. Negative 15. Negative 15. Add those together. Negative 16. Negative, negative makes a... And that's a negative... That's a positive 80? Which is... 58. Now, wait a minute, guys. 5 times 58 is a really big number. Would that even counteract just 24? I'm not even going to go any further. I recognize that. So is x plus 5 a no. factor? No. So wait. Guys, guess what? i got to factor this. x minus 2 is one factor. What's the resulting polynomial? Um, yeah. Remainder. Constant x, x squared, it's 3x squared plus 5x minus 12. And now your job is to factor that. Well, you guys will have to factor it on your own. But 3 times negative 12 is negative 36. Find the factors of negative 36 that can give you 5 so you can split it up, factor by grouping. Again, if you're not good enough with factor by grouping yet and solving or factoring quadratics, when a is not equal to 1, please look that up or come in for help. Last slide, sum it up. 
it basically says that if R is the remainder obtained after synthetic division by X minus C, then all of these are true. Then R is the value of F of C. That was synthetic substitution idea. If R is zero, then X minus C is a factor. We just talked about that in the last slide. If R is equal to zero, then C is an X-intercept because an X-intercept is or can be written as a factor. And the last one says that if it's a factor and it's an X-intercept, then it's also a solution, a.k.a. zero. All of those things are connected. They're all stated here. That's what we're saying. Your homework is worksheet 2, 2.3, 3 through 15. Follow the directions. So three, four of them, you're redoing problems you did last night. Your answers should be the same. So you'll know you're doing things right. Have a great day.